You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane, talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And finally, it feels like December, at least in the evening. It's got a bite in the air. This is the way it should be. Uh, two weeks ago or a week ago, last week, it was just balmy. It was nice. It was felt like September. Uh, so now this is when you this is when the last of the leaves will drop. So the willows are just shedding like crazy. The cottonwoods, they're pretty much done. The aspens have been over for weeks. Uh, and right now it's the Bradford pears. They're they're the last tree to turn red. It's always in that first week or two in December, then they drop and then it's Nothing but winter. This is when your evergreens shine through. This is when they anchor your landscape. This is when you're, you can really feel naked, like exposed, or you can feel, gosh, I, st- I still have a landscape. It's still, it's not just rock. I've got rock and some spruce trees or pine or fir or cypress or cedars or there's a whole bunch of evergreens that, uh, that uh, thrive in the local landscapes. It, it goes so far as to go down to the shrubs, the shrub level. So your red tip photinia, cotoneaster, euonymus, the low growing evergreens like cotoneasters, the, the creeping, creeping junipers, things that are, hover at ankle height along the ground. These are things that 20% at least of your landscape should be evergreens. Uh, if, it, if it feels empty to you, that means you've got the balance off. And so you're not working with a four-season climate. You're working somewhere else. I don't know where you're at, but it just feels empty or it feels still has this green flavor to it. And so what I thought I would do this show was go over how do you plant this time of year? Actually, it's how do you plant any time of the year, but I thought it would cover this is a good time to spot evergreens into your landscape because you can get a feel for the balance. I mean, as an architect, as a landscape designer, I can do that in a two-dimensional design. Just look at your above ground lot and go, oh, not have enough or needs more over here. But for the novice, the amateur, this is an ideal time to get a feel for it. Walk out your back patio and go, yeah, I don't know. I All of a sudden, I'm looking right into my neighbor's bedroom or, or living room or I'm watching them from across the street watch dinner every you know eat dinner every night or their TV is blazing through now that you had a hedgerow of burning bush and it was flaming red for the last two months and all of a sudden nothing choke cherries there's a whole series of beautiful fall colored spring bloomer uh, rose of Sharon's a classic lilac for Scythia you can go on and on all of a sudden they're they're empty so you can see further uh, but this is this is a time when you can can spot some more and kind of keep that privacy keep that feeling of a landscape uh, going so especially while you're sipping tea looking out the front window you don't want to feel exposed you want to be able to do that in your skivvies if you want and go up oh, I still feel private this this show we're going to show you how to uh, just describe all the details of how to have a rooting thriving plant that actively grows now through next year and beyond. So I thought we'd go over into all those tips. Right now, I would say uh, we haven't had moisture for quite a number of months. So two, three months. I mean, I thought we were going to get some moisture last week. Nothing. It just kind of blew past us and done. Just gave us cold. No, no real moisture. It is important as we go, as we dip into this cold, that your plants stay hydrated, especially plants that were just put in last year or you're thinking about adding some evergreens now through winter. It is critical. Those plants do not dry out. So a dry plant, because the roots are smaller, they haven't had a chance to grow into the surrounding soil. They're defined. The, the root size is small for the size of the plant, for new plantings. They are more dependent on you than ever for that first year or two. 
They need you to garden with them year round. And so the mountains of Arizona are unique in that we don't, the ground isn't frozen. The plants are still rooting. They're still growing. They're still budding. They're still, they're still perspiring. They're still using moisture. It's not like the Midwest where they, they freeze in place and they stick there and they just don't do anything for two, three months. Here they keep, they keep moving. This is really critical for your evergreens, your red tip photinia, uh, hedgerow, cotoneaster hedgerow, euonymus hedgerows, these big, long, I would say cypress and cedars. These plants are still using moisture. Yes, it gets cold in the evening, but during the day, it's glorious. It's beautiful. And so they're still using moisture. What happens is as that plant uses that moisture up, it, it, the, the moisture or the antifreeze within the structure of that plant stops moving. So it just kind of, it'll actually move towards the core, towards the ender, towards the bottom of the plants. And so the tops of the plants can burn. We call it winter burn or winter kill. There's several names for it, but it's pronounced here in Northern Arizona because we have cold days and warm nights. The plants don't truly shut down. We The frost line will only be ugh, inches, literally inches deep, if at all. And so the plants don't, they don't have a permafrost that locks them to place. And so they, 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 we need to hydrate plants in the winter. If you haven't done this in a while, I would suggest you drag a hose out in the next week or so. Pick a nice bright day when you're bored. You get home early, a weekend project, you're going, huh, the garage is clean. Lights are up. I've got the huge blow up sand in the front yard. It's going, maybe I should water Take a hose and water those plants. It's been months since we've had moisture, especially if you turned off your irrigation and it hasn't had moisture in a couple months. This is important. You'll see the damage show up because of this drop in the temperature. So that's critical. So especially for new plants. Newer plants are more susceptible because they have a smaller root structure. They just don't have the resources. They haven't rooted out into that surrounding soil to absorb, to have access to more moisture. So they're more dependent on you. That That's either turn your irrigation on and then turn it back off. If you, if you shut your system down and blew it out, I would say drag a hose and do it by hand. That's fine. Good deep soak. Now here's a way to visualize manually watering things as opposed to automation or drip irrigation. One inch of water visually on the ground will penetrate approximately six inches of soil. So if you've got a tree that is ah, 14 inches deep, you might need two, three inches of water showing on the surface to be able to penetrate or push down deep enough to to hydrate the entire root zone. My fear is I'm going to give you instructions to go hydrate your plants because we haven't had rain in a while. I don't want your plants to be damaged. And then you go out and kind of give everything a spit. You water a big old tree, 15, 20, 25. We have 45-gallon trees. These are big root balls that go down a couple feet. You're going to need to give that water, a good that, that plant, a good long soak. It's not like you go through and you're sipping your coffee and uh, watering out there for a few minutes and then moving on. It's going to take... Some a long, deep soak. Sometimes for a bigger tree, you might even turn that hose lightly on. Just let it slowly flow out and let it run for a couple hours. Just let it slowly drip. So you're artificial analog. You're, 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 you're doing what your clock and your drip system, your valves do for you. But you're taking the hose out and you're doing it yourself. And you're slowly letting it come on and water that plant. Slowly. Over a long period of time, pushing that water deep down through the root zone. That's what it's going to take, especially for new plants. So we got Lisa Waters Lane coming in. She's, she's got your garden questions. Let me think. I'll start how to plant maybe after her or later in the show. We're, we're going to go how to actually dig a plant. If you want to add a new hedgerow of the wind is getting to you, so you want Arizona cypress, big 25 by 12 foot wide hedgerow. We can, we'll show you how to plant that or just another Christmas holiday looking plant to decorate in the front yard. 
and everything in between, how do you put that in the ground right now or any time of the year? You'll be a pro, let me tell you, by, by the time we get done. This will be in in just a second. Be right You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, also known as the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain landscapes. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our Winter Blooming Heat. With 2018 upon us, you might as well start the gardens outright with one of these few winter blooming flowers. Ferny evergreen leaves are topped by the sweetest of bell-shaped pink flowers loves to be planted right out in the yard. Enjoy showing off in winter at just $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love winter blooming heat, they love to shop. Look, if your wife, mom, or dad wants a sweater for Christmas, get them a sweater, not some piece of plastic. But if someone you truly care about loves their garden, a gift card to Waters makes perfect sense. Next spring, she can pick out exactly what they were hoping for. We all know it's not the same as a huge hanging basket or fragrant rose, but hey, it's winter. Gardeners understand. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott and watersgardencenter.com. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now, welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. So we are in the studio with Elisa Waters Lane. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are folks talking about out in the garden? So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. So your new poinsettia you brought home and bromeliads Mm -hmm. and Christmas decor. She's (laughs) decorating, folks. One thing I got to thinking was... Yeah. You threw away the orchid. I opened up the trash. Just <laughs> sitting there right there. I would not want to be a house plant in your house. It was, it was done just so, blooming. It had flower. No, it, it was done blooming. It was in bloom in the trash. It, it just was hurt not. me. It had one bloom left on it. The rest well, of them were done. I didn't done. take a close look. All I know is I wouldn't want to be a an ugly house plant <laughs> in your house or you're out of there. We're going it, beauty, beauty, beauty. It was a living <laughs> decoration that That's had true. served its purpose. That's true. And it was time I to was move just, on. I was stunned for a moment as a gardener. The gardener within me said, no. Oh. And then, uh, then I, I got over it. I didn't pull it out. <laughs> I kept it in there. It's going to the curb this week. So yes. it's going out. I'm, I'm not one of those people that's going to save and rescue every <sighs> yeah. plant. Of course, you own a garden center. You can say that. I still wouldn't. Of course, you've always been that way. <laughs> yeah. I don't At even least know you don't means. do that with your men. Or my pets. Or your pets. <laughs> 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 so, okay, so uh, the holidays are on. It's fun. Mm-hmm. The kids are coming home. It's going to be exciting. So we're, yes. we're we're starting to decorate. But the outside's done. The inside is now going up the tree. We are snagging our tree. Yeah, I think we, we better do that ASAP. Yeah, we're running out of trees. <laughs> the market is going to run out. So it's just yeah. the way it's going to be. So we can snag ours and hold it. We'll just take it home and I'll put it back in the shade mm-hmm. to ready to put it up. So right. beautiful Nordman fir or noble fir. Did you decide? I haven't decided. I just no. need to go out there and look. I haven't looked ah. yet. One will call to me. We'll stay late. We'll do it together. It can be well, fun. I don't know it's if a I date. I, I'm thinking we got to do it ASAP. I think by this evening it'll be... Well, it could be. <laughs> so this this segment's about questions, just what mm-hmm. folks are talking about, mm-hmm. what kind of things are going on in the marketplace and out in the community. <laughs> well, it's winter. Yeah, There's not true. much going on. Fungus nap. I've been helping every other customers with fungus nap. Oh, it's that crazy. is true. We should cover that. So fungus gnats. People are bringing their plants inside, things that they want to winter over, or for some reason, why do why do fungus gnats seem worse? Once you close up the house, well, first of all, they're they're cold, so they're coming indoors where it's warm, so they can fly in. Although they would have done that several weeks ago, mm-hmm. maybe they've been there. They've been in your so a fungus gnat is it's a gnat. So the larva stage of any fly is a maggot, and so if you look underneath the plant in the soil of that house plant, whether it's a poinsettia, a Christmas cactus, a, a pothos, whatever. 
uh, you'll see white worms in the soil eating the roots. And so some, they'll live their entire life cycle up till the last few days, literally days. And they come up as adults just to, to make whoopee lay eggs and the cycle continues. So they live almost their entire life mm -hmm. as a maggot in the soil. You notice them because you're, it's in the dark. They're attracted to the light of the iPad screen or the lights of the, the TV or to the to windows. Uh, so they are attracted wherever you are. So they kind of, they're pulling, they're drawn to you, not by fragrance or any, but by the light. And so you'd notice them now because the days are shorter. I think too, so many growers, I have fired growers because they had dirty greenhouses. Mm. They had fungus, they had disease, they had wilt, they had spot, they had all kinds of stuff can grow in a greenhouse and if I see a disease coming out, they're not cleanly enough. You know, cleanliness next next to godliness, especially in a greenhouse, because everything grows so fast. If they keep shipping me stuff and it's nothing but problems, I'm going, you're fired. That's it. You're not coming here anymore because I don't want your problems coming into my gardens mm -hmm. or my customers' gardens. And I think a lot of these, especially mass growers, They've got huge greenhouses. They aren't, they're just in, involved in volume for warehouses or boxes or these huge retailers. And I, I don't, I think so many times a disease, you bring this stuff home. You bring a holiday plant home and it didn't come from your gardens. They came from outside and you thought you're bringing this beautiful grocery store, or whatever. And it had some problems and it spread mm -hmm. to the rest of your gardens. Easy to solve. If you've got this, not to worry. I, this is Ken and Lisa. We're your friends. We're just neighbors talking out by the driveway saying, here's what we're, this is what we use. It's systemic granules, very inexpensive, like 10, 12. I don't know how much it is. It's so cheap. It's, I don't know how much it is. You would just sprinkle it on the soil, water it in. It goes to the soil layers, kills the maggots. You won't have any more flies flying around, or at least within a few days. It doesn't affect the adults. Mm -hmm. It affects the larva or the worm stage. Uh, it affects them. Once you get them out of the soil and off your plants, no worries. Also, it, the plant will absorb some of this through the root structure, so it affects uh, aphids, mealybugs, some of the other stuff that can affect you later in winter or early, early spring. It just takes care of them for a while. So mm -hmm. treat that entire area of the house. I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if you have to do it to every plant, but if they're, if they're in the living room, you've got gnats flying around the treat, all of the house plants in the living room because mm -hmm. they're very social. They love to congregate and hang out together. Uh, <laughs> they, but they probably aren't in the downstairs bedroom yeah. or the master, what guest suite, whatever that you don't use very often. They're probably not in there. Mm -hmm. The other thing I find that I think adds to the problem, yeah. Um, as we close up our houses and it gets cooler, I think people tend to overwater or keep their plants oh, too moist. Yeah, that could be. And I think that increases the problem. Sure. They do like moist, wet, humid areas. Mm -hmm. And so if your plants are are are, are staying too wet, that, that can increase or expand or, or just exasperate the, the whole, whole issue. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Some, if you research it on the internet, it says, take your plants, replace all the soil. <laughs> t -t -t totally too extreme. You don't, we can right. solve this with <laughs> far less issues than that. Yeah. So. It's actually very simple. Yeah. Very simple and easy yeah. to do. And you can also use the yellow sticky traps oh, along good. with it. And that attracts the adults. They get yeah. attracted to that and they get stuck to it. Yeah. So, you know, if they're irritating you as well, we got kind of a twofold thing. Yeah. Shock and awe, marine style. <laughs> yeah. Just go after them. Don't let them live. Right. So they're attracted right. to light, bright. They're attracted to yellow. They're attracted to screens, uh, light sources. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we, we can sneak some more questions in okay. here, but it was good to cover that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Lynn, she moved up from Tucson. She brought with her her dwarf lemon tree, which is in a container, yeah. uh, but it's actually too big to move into the house. So her okay. question is, is there any way possible, anything she can do to still keep it outside, but maybe winter it over? Absolutely not. <laughs> There's no way to do that outside. Yeah. Uh, unless maybe she lives in Sedona or something, but she's in the Prescott's Highland, this central Highland area. No, it gets way too cold. Mm -hmm. You could put it in an unheated garage 
or, or crawl space. You mm-hmm. could just let it, and it would defoliate and look terrible, and it would live. But that's fine. Just let it. You, it doesn't. It, a citrus tree will go down to about mid twenties, and then it dies. Mm-hmm. So we've already been close to that in most of the areas in the Central Highlands. So it would take several nights of that in a row, but eventually that cold is going to permeate down to the core of the tree and obliterate it. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to grow outdoors. I mean, give it to a friend or find a way to, to bring it indoors, cut it way back and put it in that dugout basement that has no light. Just let it stay there. Water it real deep and then bring it out next April and then fertilize it. It will flush with new growth and grow mm-hmm. that way. Some folks will store geraniums that way. Sure. Uh, that that's probably the best advice I can give you. Or in the spring, you know, get another one. <laughs> and we do grow dwarf citrus in containers, mm-hmm. things that stay smaller that we can bring indoors and then use as house plants. Mm-hmm. We just simply trim them to keep them cute and nice. And I think we have some. I mean, I saw some grapefruits if they're still here. Mm-hmm. Grapefruits on a miniature. A citrus tree. Uh, right. We'll have uh, mandarin oranges, uh, Meyer lemons, all that stuff. But that's mainly in the spring, May, June, July is when we mm-hmm. have those. And we purposely bring in dwarf varieties so you can grow them in containers and then bring them indoors purposefully, usually by the first to mid part of November. Well, that's it for this segment of the show. Good, good questions, folks. Good topics. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Waters Garden Center, showcasing this week's Plant of the Week and my fresh-cut Nordman fir. With five different varieties, from pine to fir, I assure you not all cut trees are created equal. Nordmans are related to our native fir. The soft green needles adorn dark green branches that defy gravity, even with heavy ornaments, and stays fresh. A big tree is just $89 and only grown here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love super fresh Christmas trees love to shop. Look, if your wife, mom, or dad wants a sweater for Christmas, get them a sweater, not some piece of plastic. But if someone you truly care about loves their garden, a gift card to Waters makes perfect sense. Next spring, she can pick out exactly what they were hoping for. We all know it's not the same as a huge hanging basket or fragrant rose, but hey, it's winter. Gardeners understand. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott and watersgardencenter.com. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now, welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Well, I've finally done it. My pride and joy is in the trash. I grew a giant pumpkin last spring. So last season, I put in... Pumpkin, I've been growing this thing. It was, I don't know, just under 100 pounds. It wasn't giant, giant, but it was huge. I've had it on display at my front door in a beautiful ox blood red pot. So red with the orange, just kept it upright and showed it off more. I finally had the guts to throw it away. It was just sad. I just didn't want it to go. It was just, I was so proud of it. But it was, it was time. <laughs> it didn't mix with all the other Christmas stuff that... As I'm putting up the lights and other decor. So instead, I bought, it's amazing what you can find online. Um, maybe I'll post this on uh, <laughs> on her Facebook page or something. I'll take a picture. But I bought a, uh, a Santa and a reindeer. And it, you tie it up to your tree. So I've got this huge maple tree in the front yard. It's magnificent. It doesn't have any leaves, but this big trunk white with dark markings, just beautiful, beautiful tree uh, with a big trunk tree right by the driveway. It's, it looks like the reindeer ran into the tree and just like flattened, bonk. <laughs> so his arms wrap around the tree going, that's pretty fun. And then at the Santa, basically you tie to your gutters <laughs> and it looks like they landed on the, on the, on the roof, hit the tree and then uh, 
He's trying to cut. He's grabbing onto the gutter, trying to get down. It's just whimsical and fun, and the grandkids are going to love it. But it didn't go with all of my uh, with my giant pumpkin. So I had to, and I had some some dumpster space. I didn't want to compost it because it'll be nothing but javelina attracting rats attracting. I thought I'm just gonna I'm gonna make the call, put it in the trash, haul it out of here, just so I don't have issues down the road. I do find that. The rats are out right now, the pack rats. I've caught two in the backyard in the last couple of weeks. Before it was voles, uh, little field mice. Now it's pack rats. And so they seem to be attracted to the, to the mulch piles, any leftover fruit that the dying decayed, or maybe it's just warm by the house. And they're just trying to get warm, finding a new place to, place to hang out. And so the built-in grills, the, the furniture pad, that bin that holds all the furniture pads, the tool shed, the garage underneath the garage. We even had them in our sheds across the street here at the nursery. We keep all of our pesticides and stuff locked up. They got in there and were eating some potting soil. I'm sure it's organic potting soil. I'm sure they were eating the, I don't know, blood meal or bone meal or feather meal, something in there. But be careful. Watch your garden sheds. Go after them. So keep a trap up. Have a have some bait out. So in my front yard, I've got bait stations. I'm going, come in, dine, have a feast on me. One last meal. I'm worried about the dogs, though. So in the backyard where they roam around freely, I just have rat traps. So we've got some real nice ones here at the nursery. It's easy to set. They don't try to snap your fingers off. I put a little peanut butter, and I just keep them out where by the hot tub. I keep them by the bin where the... By the, by the grill, by the where they seem to congregate, and I, that's how I know when they're really active. They were younger rats, so it looks like mom may have kicked out some of the the youngsters, and so there you can tell they're definitely younger, uh, not old crusty rats that are mean and aggressive. These are younger folks, and so I don't mind you living out there in your own space. But when you try to come in and take over my space, we're going to have issues and I'm going to win. And so I just monitor this and that's how I keep a halo or, or a, a ring of safety for my gardens around my, my yard. And that's just what I've noticed so far. But but be careful of that. When it's cold, it got, got real cold all of a sudden. I think they're coming in looking for warmer spaces. So they'll like that garage. If you leave it open, they'll come in and make a nest in there. Uh, so they'll, they'll love that built-in grill. They'll, they'll, they'll destroy your, your hot tub. They love the warmth. They'll eat a hole through it and get into the inner workings. Just be careful. They'll get into the RV, strip the wires. And so just watch that. You should be prepared. And they, they are active right now is what it, my personal experience has been. How to plant a new plant. Yes, you can plant a new plant now. Yes, it is perfectly fine. You folks from Southern Cal, Palm Springs, Tucson, Phoenix, the, the, the lowlanders, you're used to one season basically, hot or just, just tropical or just here we've got four seasons and you can garden. We have landscape crews out 12 months out of the year. In fact, I just talked to one of the crew, the chief foreman, and uh, basically there is no frost line. They're still planting. No worries. It's pretty easy digging. And they're putting new living trees in, hedgerows, whatever they're planting. It's okay to plant now. We should go over, if you're thinking about that light coming from the new 60-inch TV coming from the neighbor's living room is bugging you, we can screen that. You can place something right now and put an evergreen in there, and that'll never bother you again. Let's go over how to plant in the mountains of Arizona, the how-tos and how to take care of it right now or any time of the year. But first, we've got Lisa Waters Lane coming in. Let's get her take on gardening. We're going to details on how to plant after that. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi. Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our Winter Blooming Heat. With 2018 upon us, you might as well start the gardens outright with one of these few winter blooming flowers. 
Ferny evergreen leaves are topped by the sweetest of bell-shaped pink flowers. Loves to be planted right out in the yard. Enjoy showing off in winter at just $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love winter blooming heat, they love to shop. Waters Garden Center is showcasing this week's Plant of the Week and my fresh cut Nordman fir. With five different varieties from pine to fir, I assure you not all cut trees are created equal. Nordmans are related to our native fir. The soft green needles adorn dark green branches that defy gravity, even with heavy ornaments, and stays fresh. A big tree is just $89 and only grown here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love super fresh Christmas trees love to shop. So we have Lisa Waters Lane back in the studio. She comes to inspire us to uh, to garden more, to have more fragrance and beauty and color and friend and and just she's she's now decorating. I can tell you firsthand experience as the man she chose to live with for the rest of my life, at least. <laughs> I don't know about yours. She's decorating galore with poinsettias and Christmas, all the holiday plants indoors. Mm-hmm. The tree isn't up yet, no, but all the holiday plants. Are. So yes. I love the beautiful big bowl you brought with three different yeah, poinsettias in it. It's, it's stunning. I know. Everyone's going to comment about that. I know. So. I, I was at work. I was just a hair board. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, that would look good together. So I found a yeah. big green ceramic pot and I put two burgundy poinsettias in with a kind of a pink one that we yeah. had and it was absolutely gorgeous Some really pretty new colors of poinsettias mm-hmm. this year we, we've got the basic red and they're stunning mm-hmm. but some of the newer colors are like that's stunning this is oh my gosh wow that's yeah. beautiful i've never like seen the, that before the burgundy because it fits better into our house because yeah. we have more burgundy colors going on rather than red uh-huh. but you know red's traditional and it's always very very pretty but yeah nice to have something different oh, well done i like it should we give people the news <laughs> what Which... do i know the news <laughs> <laughs> well we just got back so lisa and i went in with a bunch of families here in prescott oh. have a houseboat on lake powell now so we put our yes. first it's been our first week Yes. I'm like Powell at Waweep Marina, mm-hmm. and you described it as <laughs> the, the zombie apocalypse landed, and we're the only human beings left. <laughs> it, was, it was very quiet up there. <laughs> <laughs> it was relaxing. Yes, so you're, yes, you're, it, it was relaxing. So we're it's the only weird. ones walking up and down the piers, and mm-hmm. and the dogs were with us. So it's a, yeah, we're they loved house. it. They could run to their hearts yep. content. To, and, to the doggy park or out to the yeah we then ran from the houseboat we never even took it out we just kept it in the slip and then well we took it out well to fuel it up far water. But yeah, we just around out. the marina that's not taking it out my i dear. know we'll was for that me later so yeah. and then we went from there went out to to zion and hiked around lake powell and just used it as our yeah. it was fun base home base of operation kind of thing mm-hmm. very fun very very nice. Yeah. Very We're usually relaxing. surrounded by people so much that we never get alone time. It was almost kind of weird. It's eerie. It was quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Almost felt like you had a double tap. Anyone you see <laughs> coming out with their hands extended going, oh, zombies. <laughs> anyway. So that was fun. We'll go back again. So we get one, one week a month. So right. that'll be fun. We'll have our family reunion on the lake this year. That yeah. will be nice. That'll be interesting. You think August or... July or what are you thinking? I have no idea. It depends on those kids. They're all so busy. When does James graduate from PA school? So he's in the army. June he's getting, 8th. June 8th. Yes. He's got to go to officer training after that or yes. what, what's when does he take his boards? I didn't I can't track all that. I have no idea. Oh, okay. So, I know he nesters. graduates June 8th. Okay. But then he's got like a mil- million other things he has to do. <laughs> <laughs> I would not want to be in my 20s and early 30s for anything. It's too just exhausting. It just too, takes too much energy. They're raising yeah. kids. So it's yeah. just, that's good. So, so this yeah. segment's about inspiration, not just about right. our, our new toys <laughs> and family and up to date right. on stuff. What, what do you got yeah, for us? Yeah, so Christmas. Yay! So everybody's thinking, oh, those gifts, and there's nothing more stressful, at least in my mind, than trying to find that perfect gift for that wonderful someone in your life. Oh, are we talking about me right now? Oh, you're impossible That's to buy a gift for. Impossible. Uh, Absolutely 
Impossible. Although this year, I came up with some good ones. Really? Yes. I just search for you year round. <laughs> so I've always got gifts squirreled away around the house. So I've got to pull off any time. Uh huh. I kind of got know. it covered. I got it covered. I you do. Know. You have a, a box of things. Don't go through my box. <laughs> it's in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what'd you come up with? Gift, well, anyways, impossible gifts okay, for. So I was thinking gifts for gardeners. gardeners. Yeah, people outdoorsy like their gardens, like to be out in their gardens. Yeah. Uh, so a few things that I thought of of stuff that we have here that they might enjoy. Uh, one would be an easy read outdoor thermometer. So we're kind of reaching that age where <laughs> you can't see those little tiny numbers anymore. You need the bigger numbers. So we have some really nice quality outdoor thermometers. Now, you know, you can find them everywhere, but we've had them where they work for like yeah. a week, three weeks, one season, and yeah. then they quit. Chinese piece of junk. And no matter what you do, you can't get them to work again. These are brass. They're just very high quality. Yeah. And they are going to hold up. And you're going to be able to read them. So um, I don't know. Outdoorsy people, men especially, they like to know what temperature it is. And what time it is. And yeah. what day it is. <laughs> no, I just talked to a gentleman this week. He's new to the area. He mm-hmm. lives out in, in, I think, Stone Ridge, so Prescott oh. Valley. Came in. He's looking for evergreens for his mm-hmm. landscape. And we just got to talking. He goes, yep, I love to garden, and I love to golf. So he loves just oh. being outdoors. outdoors. His two things are gardening and golfing. That's, sure. just, that's what he does. He was adding to the gardens. I'm mm-hmm. just helping him out with some the back in the privacy screen area yeah. stuff. So I think men... They like to be outdoors. Sure. You kind of want to, what? If, how do I dress for that? How? What? what right. do I, I'm going to walk the dogs. Mm-hmm. Where? How? How many layers do I need on? Yeah. Temperature. Sure. So that's a, a good one. We have some really nice rain chains in. Oh, those are pretty. Uh, which are practical, but also very ornamental. Uh, just some very unique ones. One that looks like a little beehive that has bees on it. Um, some that are very utilitarian, little cups, little lily cups, but just very unique ones. So you should explain um, what rain chains are to folks. Like why I've got downspouts. <laughs> why would I want a rain? Or where do I, I don't have they any. look really cool. I don't think you have to use them just in a downspout. <laughs> you don't. I think you, you can use them just as decoration off the deck or something. So Yes, so they're very ornamental. But yes, technically you hang them off of your you probably explain it better than I would, but it's a way of controlling the rain off of your roof so that it doesn't just go everywhere. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. No, we, we okay. put them on a couple cottages, rentals mm-hmm. that we have, because it dolled them up and made them look not just, this is a rental. This is the cottage. You want right. to rent it? Is that. It was, just, mm-hmm. it was like a game changer. Right. We just put them instead of a downspout, which is so utilitarian. We just said, decorative, coming out. Stays with the house. Not, it's not yours. <laughs> Can't dig it. You're, yep. And then, but then it comes down to a beautiful glazed pot. We mm-hmm. filled the pot with decorative rocks. And it feel, you know it just controls the the rain where it goes away from the foundation. Right. So, But it's a pretty way to do it, not just a downspouts or basically ugly we're, we're, we try to hide them with pots of plants <laughs> and that kind of stuff right and that's what yeah. they are so yeah, these are very chimes. pretty they're also in that same line we have some very unique uh wind chimes and oh. mobiles uh, yeah. that can go outside just very pretty mm-hmm. uh, kind of a rusty metal look very yeah. attractive um another great one is just a good stocking stuffer is seed packets. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, especially for the gardener. And... Wildflowers, yeah. just pretty seed packets, even vegetable seed packets. Okay. Uh, you know, for that gardener, they that's a good terrific idea. little uh, stocking stuffer. I can't even talk now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, gift cards. I mean, get, yeah. a, get a beautiful ceramic pot. And give a gift card with it. Oh, that's good. And that way, when it warms, with some gloves them, sticking out, a new trowel, go, a and, new uh, trowel, you can make some... it really decorative. Oh yeah, and then that way they have that gift card. So come spring, when they're ready to fill the pot, they've got a, a, a nice gift card, and they can take it and bring it in and get their pretty plants to fill it. Thing about gardeners, they're always planning. Oh yeah, I just talked to a gardener just just before this, loading some soils up. And he goes, what you doing? We were loading a bunch of topsoil and, mm-hmm. and uh, potting soil. He goes, well, you planted a few trees for us a couple of years ago, and my pear's not doing that well. I am going to plan for next year. He's always planning. Right. 
I'm going to put some boulders up. I'm going to raise the soil up. It's on a hill. I'm going to, he's gardening plant. Gardeners are always thinking ahead of the next season. They're always hopeful. They are. <laughs> it's so inspirational to talk to him. He's just out there. It was like, I don't know, 40 degrees out. It was mm-hmm. chilly. Just chatting by the mulch piles, right. taking in the fragrance of manures and how he's <laughs> going to get more pears next year. But yeah. they're thinking of the newest roses, a new hanging oh, sure. basket. They're just always thinking the colors are going to use. So I mean, I'm thinking of that. Mm-hmm. We used yellow this year. Next year, I'm thinking orangey reds. Okay. I, we'll see what colors come out. But true gifts for gardeners from a garden center. Uh, that That's good suggestions, Lisa. Very, Thank very you. timely. Be right back with more on The Mountain Gardeners. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Ouch! Oh man, another rock! Hi, I'm Rusty. You know, the shovel you're destroying trying to dig that hole? Sure, I get it. You got these beautiful plants at Waters Garden Center. Waters asked if they could plant them for you, but no. You had to do it yourself, even though they would plant, deliver, and guarantee your plants for two years. I hope I don't end up like that old pickaxe. Ouch! Prevent yard tool abuse. Waters Garden Center. They plant, deliver, and guarantee. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our Winter Blooming Heat. With 2018 upon us, you might as well start the gardens outright with one of these few winter blooming flowers. Ferny evergreen leaves are topped by the sweetest of bell-shaped pink flowers. Loves to be planted right out in the yard. Enjoy showing off in winter at just $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love winter blooming heat, they love to shop. Okay, so let's go over exactly how to plant. This is just basically you need three things, the size of the hole, how to mend it. Now, our soils in the mountains, I don't care where you are, Cordes Junction, Verde Valley, Kingman, Williams, Prescott. I mean, we're we're all kind of, once you come up that hill from I-17, we get into this rocky, clay, caliche, thick soils. As you get closer to, let's say, Granite Mountain here in Prescott, the, the soil can get granity or, or sandy looking, but that's very rare. Usually, like in Skull Valley, I had silt soils right on, right on Kirkland Creek. We're farming down there, uh, greenhouse growing, and, and the silt, the soil looked good, but it was heavy and thick, and I overwatered. Prescott Valley, our house out there, heavy and thick and caliche layers. When you walked on top of the soil and it was wet, you would literally grow in height by two, three, four inches as the mud stuck to the bottom of your feet. That's what we're mainly dealing with. And plants don't like that. They don't like clay. They don't like thick, wet soils. They don't like to sit in moisture nonstop, never able to breathe. They like looser soil that has some organic matter in it that doesn't compact down so the roots can get through it and find water and food and nutrients. They don't go down. They go out because down, all they get more of is rock and clay and there's no moisture. There's just no nutrients. The nutrients and moisture is up towards the surface. So you look at very mature native plants, a huge alligator juniper, a giant oak. Their roots go down about 18 inches, turn, and they just start going out, searching for food and water. Your plants, when you plant them, will do the exact same thing. If you know that about the native plants that grow here, and you're going to add a new pinion pine or a new spruce, a new whatever it is, you're going to add a new plant in the yard as a decoration or just, I need more evergreens, know that the roots are going to go down about a foot, foot and a half, turn and go sideways where the drip irrigation is, where the moisture is, or where that dry wash is, or where they're looking for air, nutrients, and moisture. So they don't like that deeper soil. So no roots. You'll see new subdivisions go in. They just popped over that that, uh, majestic uh, 300-year-old juniper. The roots are a foot and a half deep, as wide as a plant, probably wider. So if that's how you're going to do that, Whatever size plant you're planting, whatever the tree is, whatever the shrub is, whatever the vine is, only dig the hole as deep as the root ball, not any deeper. 
and then wide. So we're going three times the width, kind of saucer shaped. So the secret is wide, not deep. Whatever we do, you don't want to listen to any advice coming out of the deserts. Down in Phoenix or Tucson or these places, they tell you, oh, you want to dig a wide hole. You want to have a, you want it to, your plant to be in a divot. You want it to be, you want a rain harvest. You, you don't want to do that where you're getting 20 inches of rain a year. You, where you're getting more than five inches of rain a year, especially when all the rain is coming in July, August, September, and it just gathers up on us. During the monsoons, you'll get three heavy rains in the afternoon that, that, that divot, that hole that you wanted to rain harvest will fill up and it will never drain. The plant won't be able to breathe, and so it literally suffocates or root rots is what we call it. Uh, that's the official term. But it's because that plant stayed too moist. Now you've got drip system on top of that. You combine drip with our monsoonal rains over the mountains. We can overwater plants. If anything, especially for you folks out that 69 corridor uh, where you got heavy caliche layers all the way out to Spring Valley and Cordes Junction, all the way down the hill at I-17, down to the Camp Verde and the Verde River. You've got heavy silts. You don't plant in a divot there. You want to actually be a little above ground there. I tell our planting crews when I'm training them, leave two inches of the root ball out of the ground. Then mound the soil up on, around that root ball. So if we get a heavy rain, at least the plant can breathe, at least two inches of, of root can breathe while the rest of that plant drowns it can it's like like you sitting in a, in a swimming pool leaving your nose up out of the water at least you can breathe until you get a break till you can get out of that water till the rain cycle is over the second thing so white hole if anything plant a little above never below grade level whatever you do now you've got to actually change the structure of the soil your contractor when he came in to build your house took a took a backhoe and scraped off every living thing that was there on your, on your, on your landscape. So no, all that topsoil that was maybe two, three inches deep, all got scooched down and, and hauled away. Some of you are literally trying to garden in dead soil. There's not one worm that's attracted there, no mycorrhizal fungi, so there's no leaf mold. There's no topsoil. There's just caliche and rock and clay and yuck and growth. Things, plants aren't going to aren't going to grow in that. So if you just take a plant from the nursery, chuck it inside that native soil and backfill, your plants will not, they'll sit there. They won't die. They won't grow. They'll just sit there and look at you, stick their tongue out at you and go, I, I will not grow here because there's no living soil around there. It's going, all I have is my little bit of soil. It'll try to use that up as long as it can. And within two years, it'll just kind of fade and, and, and struggle. You want to take that soil that you dug out of that hole, so the same depth, three times the width, size hole, screen out the, the rocks, screen out the old roots, screen out the contractor's bricks he buried down there, the debris pile, the whatever you see. Anything bigger than a golf ball, screen it out. Uh, old roots, don't leave those in there. Screen them out. Now take about 25%, about one shovel's worth of mulch, premium mulch, to three shovels worth of native soil. You want to add some organics into that soil. That's going to be the secret to getting, to igniting, to attracting worms, to bringing the, the living organisms in the soil that will colonize the living uh, things that live in the soil. So the plant goes, whoa, something's going on here. I, I'm gonna, I, I can grow here. I'm going to root out and just take off. Plus the organic matter it keeps that clay soil, that heavy soil, from compacting right back down. So we're putting, we're changing the structure of the soil, and we're we're adding organics in there so it can't compact down. Now the roots can get through it faster. We tracked worms. It's all gonna it's all gonna take off from there, at soil level or a little above. Take your root, pull it out of the pot, loosely loosen up the roots on the bottom, especially plant it. Take that mixture of mulch and native soil, backfill around there, pack it in real tight, water it in. That's it. That's how you plant. In addition, what I do, let's say if our crews are coming out there to plant for you, we'll sprinkle some all-purpose plant food around it. Some, it's an organic food we make for ourselves, we make here at Waters. We'll sprinkle some of that out, and that way, when the water hits that, when you irrigate over the next three months, it'll release a little food, 
every time it gets, gets watered, it'll release a little food. So we encourage root growth. Before we leave, we'll actually water it in with a rooting hormone. It's called root and grow. It's kind of like the old B1, you know, your grandparents used to use. Only we add some, some rooting hormones in there that encourage new root growth. And the plants will root now for the next month through the next uh, through the end of the year at least. It'll it'll keep rooting. So we'll water that in before we leave and, and just to just to make sure the plant's happy that it takes, that it starts to send off new root hairs. Those roots that we, we loosened up at the bottom, we'll break some of those roots. We'll that'll, that'll, that'll cause some of those roots to form to new root hairs. If it's a tree, we'll stake it. Just because, especially in evergreen, a new spruce tree out there looks so good and it shouldn't need, need staking. But if we get a heavy snow, it'll load up on top of that evergreen and it'll just kind of flop over. So the stakes are there just to keep it upright. So any new root hairs that form, we don't break those and have to start all over again. doesn't damage the tree, but we just want it to stay upright. So that's what you need. Mulch, you need an all-purpose plant food. And you need root and grow. For trees, you need stakes. So there's three, three things. In the nursery, I have a free handout. It goes with diagrams, exactly how much you need for size of plant. And on the back, it says how to water. It's meant every time you buy a plant, from, from our place at least, you get one of these. We want to make sure you know how to plant locally. But in a nutshell, that's what it says. And so come in for that free guide. And I'll, I'll, we want you to be better gardeners here in the mountains of Arizona. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Look, if your wife, mom, or dad wants a sweater for Christmas, get them a sweater, not some piece of plastic. But if someone you truly care about loves their garden, a gift card to Waters makes perfect sense. Next spring, she can pick out exactly what they were hoping for. We all know it's not the same as a huge hanging basket or fragrant rose, but hey, it's winter. Gardeners understand. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott and watersgardencenter.com. Let me give you a word of warning. If you were looking at using a living Christmas tree uh, as a holiday decoration thing, you're, you should be okay. I've got, I've got enough of those left. The marketplace is going to run out, I predict, okay, it's still the first week in December, but it seems like the market is going to run out of cut Christmas trees. I've seen this happen before where it's just really grossly short. And so what you'll find is that beautiful spruce in the front of a church parking lot, a commercial business, they're in danger. People will start harvesting those because they're desperate and they're not willing. They'll go take it out of your landscape. If you've got a nice evergreen in your business or in your house or in your, I would, what I've done in my own yard, I've taken the security cameras. I've got Wi-Fi, you know, Arlo uh, Wi-Fi security cameras, and I'm pointing them on my landscapes. That way, if you take my trees, I can come and get you. And I will with everything I got. So that's just wrong. But I just just realize I've seen this happen before. Man, my name's Ken. We're just friends. We're talking. It's just us. But if the marketplace runs out too early and there just aren't enough trees to go around, some folks won't buy a living tree. They'll, they don't like plastic. They'll go take from someone else. And you'll, you'll hear stories. It just scratched my head going, man, really? You're stealing landscape trees because you want to have a week's worth of celebration? What kind of celebration is that? Anyway, take watch your security cameras, know what could happen, and just be preventative. I think it'll be a change. And then if you're doing cut Christmas trees, get them right away. Because I think the marketplace will be run out. By next weekend, there will be serious gaps in certain sizes and varieties. Uh, we're already starting to see that with our trees. We're, uh, I think, 12 or 15% ahead of last year as far as sales. I don't know why. It's not because of my magical marketing. I'm doing the same I've always done for years. It's just the marketplace. People feel good. They're buying more. They're buying bigger. And so there's buy more. So I think that may be part of it too. 
Maybe your big box stores that have distribution centers that can get more trees out quickly. Maybe they'll fill the gap. But what you find is this is a very limited crop. Trees, when they're gone, they're just gone. They can shuffle a little bit, but you can't go to the farm and get more. They're just out. There are no more trees. So just be aware of that. And then to wrap up, I don't want to leave you on a negative note. <laughs> to wrap up, watch your trees. Remember we started the show with watering your landscape. It's been dry for a while, and it could be dry for another month. We can have long dry spells. And if we do get any moisture, it'll be little bits, not a lot, until March. March tends to be a wet month for us. So we can have up to a couple months worth of dry. If you've planted new trees or new landscapes or especially your 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 evergreens, they're very sensitive to going dry in the winter. Water those things a couple times a month. That's the general rule. So twice a month, if we get a nice storm, you can cut it off to just once a month. But you should be watering your landscape at least one time a month to keep them hydrated, to keep that antifreeze going up and down the structure of that plant, to keep them healthy. That's what will set the stage for next spring's flush of flowers for your lilacs or, or fruit trees, flush of new evergreen growth for pines, spruce, fir, uh, flush of new uh, privacy screens for, for hedgerows, uh, Arizona cypress. That's what keeps them healthy. They are still rooting. They are still setting buds. In fact, as the leaves drop, you'll see huge leaf buds. So they're using moisture, just not a lot. So if you're watering every day or every like you were back in spring, that's way too much. Cut it back to a couple times a month. And that's good. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. May we wish you and yours the merriest of holidays and your gardens a prosperous new year. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our McMinn Manzanita. Part of Waters expanding native selection, this is the big, bold manzanita you find growing throughout Arizona. A local evergreen growing wild with the classic red bark for a style and drought-hardy landscape. Locally grown for local landscapes, this Easy Care shrub is just $39. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love lots of native plants, they love to shop. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. At Waters Garden Center, we're here to help, in the landscape at least. Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood, the plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally, or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center. You've been listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to the area. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener.